Ship It is WebShippers podcast that brings you current stories plus tips and tricks for your online business. The episodes last approximately 15 minutes, so get ready to listen. And behind the mic, you will find me, Marie Andersen. Today, I have the honor of having Amazon expert Anna Norlander with me. And for the next 20 minutes, we will focus on the northern advent of Amazon, more specifically Sweden, and how you as a web shop owner can benefit from its coming. More specifically, we will focus on t- subjects such as Anna's experience in relation to selling on Amazon, Amazon SE, the Swedish Amazon, three common mistakes, and three advice on how to succeed. But Anna, if we are going to begin with you, then how was your experience on Amazon? Well, I actually, uh, my journey with Amazon started fairly early from a Swedish perspective, at least. So I joined a startup in 2012 called The Friendly Swede, which was pretty much one of the first native Amazon brands in Sweden. So we built our entire business on selling stuff on Amazon. Uh, So yeah, I've been uh, on uh, Amazon for about almost nine years now. Um, well, that's actually quite a long time then. It, well, I mean, uh, yesterday I had an American entrepreneur contact me on LinkedIn and she'd been in the business since 2004. So I guess, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's almost. A, yeah, a, a, it's a, like I'm, I'm up to half of hers. But yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I think like um, for the Nordics, it's, it's a fairly long time because when we started out, people would just kept on asking me, they're like, so, you know, do you sell books? Yeah. Whenever I mentioned that we were selling stuff on Amazon, and I was and like, that's "No, that's always what what people think." Yeah, automatically. <laughs> uh, well, it used to be at least. I'd have to say, like in Sweden, at least, the conversation has changed a bit during maybe the last two, three years. But mm. uh, uh, earlier than that, it was always uh, the books. And then, why don't you have your own web shop? Yeah, of course. Then, but why? But why did you actually decide to to use Amazon? I mean, um, the um, guy who started the friend of Sweet, John Lundqvist, he started off by selling stuff on Amazon. So he had mm. a few friends that were living down in China, um, American friends who were already doing this business with like finding products down there and selling on Amazon in the US. Mm. So one of these guys asked John if he wanted to, you know, come and learn the business. And John moved down to China, started setting up this business, selling on Amazon. And yeah, we kept on focusing on Amazon. Um, and today, I mean, I handed over the daily management of the business in early 2016. So today um, we also have our own web shop, but still like the majority of our sales are on Amazon. Mm. So how did you benefit from it? Well, we built our entire business. There is yeah. <laughs> without it, without Amazon, we wouldn't have uh, any business today i'd say. So, oh, okay, I see. <laughs> yeah. So back then it was like, you know, um, it was really early in sort of Amazon days still. So whatever product we launched that had like three reviews or more would pretty much sell instantly. Mm. So when I took over as CEO in the beginning of 2014, I think we had like over a thousand different products uh, in different product categories under our own brand. Uh, and that, you know, like it wouldn't have been possible, most likely wouldn't have been possible if we'd just been in our own web shop. But on Amazon... Um, it's always been a focus on the product and not the brand. Mm. Yeah. So, so, which makes it easier to we we built the products that were sought after on Amazon and where the mm. competition wasn't too harsh, and mm. that worked really well back then. Today, it's uh, a lot trickier. But how is it today then? It's harder because, of course, I mean, like if you get on Amazon today, you're late. Yeah. You're late by you know a fair couple of years. Yeah. But also Amazon especially I'd say in the last year, year and a half, Amazon is trying to like tweak their uh, business towards becoming more of a branded experience. Mm, yeah. So consumers are still mainly looking for products and products with, you know, specific, um, uh, what can you say? Like, you know, you'd look for a specific type of product. You wouldn't look for a brand. Mm. So you would look for men's running shoes. Yeah. You wouldn't necessarily look for Nike running shoes. Oh, okay. So Nike is a good example, though, because, I mean, they left Amazon a, a year ago. They did, actually. Uh, I, did, had... I did not know that. No, they did. Um, oh, left. Well, they stopped selling directly to Amazon retail. Mm. 
And um, they had been running a pilot for a while. And I actually just finished an article on that by Marketplace Pulse. And they discussed the fact that Nike has been doing really well without Amazon. Oh, okay. Amazon hasn't done as well without Nike. However, oh. though, um, it's still, you know, if you go in there, you won't see Nike's full catalog anymore and less than ideal product presentations. Mm. So we'll see how, what kind of an effect it has long term. Yeah, okay, but if we uh, if we take a closer look at uh, at Amazon as a e-commerce experience, then how then why do you think that that Amazon is such a huge contender today? Because they have been focusing on building from the customer need. I mean, Amazon they pushed the whole two-day shipping experience. I mean, c consumers today pretty much expect things to arrive within mm. two days, which really wasn't the case before Amazon started pushing that limit. And also now looking at one-day free shipping. And I mean, they have Prime, which was a brilliant idea. Mm. Um, In what you know, way? You get people to pay for you know, using your services or becoming part of your customer loyalty club. And mm. then you give them so many perks that they pretty much wouldn't go anywhere else. And also, why would you shop anywhere else if you have the everything store? Anything you want, you can pretty much buy on Amazon. Mm. And you're already paying to, for free shipping and stuff. So why wouldn't you use that free shipping? I mean, the whole idea is pretty, it's pretty brilliant. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Like if you, well, if you compare it to other like e-commerce uh, platforms and yeah 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 i mean it's it's been a huge part of amazon's success in the matter mm. and also of course i mean today they're so big so they have money to spend on you know development uh, it infrastructure all of that and they're doing all of, a lot of it i wouldn't say all of it because i wouldn't know that but the majority is taking place in-house and they're able to fine tune a lot of things which it would be pretty much impossible for you know someone who has their own web shop mm. to do it at the same scale, yeah, which means they can be at the forefront <laughs> of mm. uh, development. However, though, looking at if we go back to the brand experience, they're so far behind there. Really? Like, um, yeah. Like, I mean, if you compare it to Chinese actors and live shopping, was pretty much just introduced on Amazon uh, the last year, mm -hmm. and it still hasn't taken a lot of place. And also you haven't been able, like Amazon is so standardized the way you present your products. In, in what sure. way? In what way is it standardized? So you say like, if you go on Amazon and you search for a product, um, say umbrella, and then you'll end up with a search results that just shows, you know, the main image of different types of umbrellas on mm -hmm. offer. And uh, the brands are really restricted. So what you can put in that main image, for example, is, you know, the product placed on a purely white background and no fuss around it. And it looks the same like if you go into the product detail pages, it's only in these last years that Amazon has allowed, you know, more uh, creative images and a little bit more of videos and stuff like that. So you've been really, really restricted in how you can promote your products on Amazon. Uh, okay. But it's changing and it's changing rapidly. So particularly looking from an ads perspective. So putting your ads on Amazon today is more complex than it's ever been before. In, in what way is it more complex? Because these days, I mean, you used to be able to pretty much it's only have sponsored products, which means like it's, a, it's an auction, pay-per-click, all of that you recognize from Google advertising. Yeah. Uh, but these days you're allowed to, you know, you can actually do run video ads that's still in beta testing sort of, and you can have more creative ads and there are lots of different ways to target your customers, which weren't really available before. Mm -hmm. So Amazon has really started um, seeing that, you know, ads revenue is a kind of a nice revenue. Yeah, I guess. Because <laughs> a lot of purchases, you know, a lot of product purchases are starting on Amazon these days. So people go in there to search for products instead of, you know, Googling things. Mm. Um, which means that, yeah, there's a lot to win for Amazon in uh, the advertising business side. Yeah, I see, definitely. It sounds like it. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, but like one of the reasons why we're talking today is because we are focusing on the Swedish uh, version of Amazon, so to say. Um, but why do you think that, that Amazon has chosen to open in Sweden? Well, um, it's kind of, I mean, it would be a natural uh, expansion for them into the northern parts of Europe, really. Mm. I mean, Sweden well, is... I also think like compared to other Nordic countries, for instance. 
the, the biggest. <laughs> yeah, the biggest. <laughs> I mean, like, that would be the natural reason, I'd say. Um, I mean, Sweden is uh, fairly, we're also a place pretty much in the middle, you know, so mm. makes logistics easier. But I think um, both Swedish and also Danish consumers were pretty far ahead when it comes to the e whole e-commerce experience. And mm. I think that, yeah, Amazon choosing Sweden over any of the other uh, Nordic countries to begin with is probably based on size. Because, mm. I mean, it's as much hard work to do something for a smaller population than it is to do for a larger one. Yeah. So, And also a lot of people are like, oh, why are they so late in Sweden? I was like, well, they you know, been busy focusing on India, for example. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they can't do everything at the same time. And um, I think the fact that they're going entering Sweden now is just purely based on, yeah, well, what can we win from entering the Swedish market? They're already a bit late in Sweden mm. compared to a lot of other countries where they've entered. Uh, but I think it was a natural step, but it's, it wasn't something that was rushed because yeah, it's still a small market. But what Amazon do you think term. that that Amazon will will benefit from it, like in the end? Also, because you said that actually they were a bit late. Yeah, and that's interesting because uh, I mean, if you look at Amazon, they pretty much have three big things on offer. So it's the fast and free shipping, it's good prices, and it's the fact it's the everything store. Mm. Whatever you want to buy, you'll be able to buy it on Amazon. And in Sweden, I mean, fast and free shipping used to that low prices also fairly used to that you know the e whole e-commerce experience is pretty advanced so today it's pretty much just the everything store that amazon brings that's kind of new to the swedish market i'd say and mm. um, so i think that's where they'll have a chance to win over the swedish consumer but it won't happen straight away because we're so used to shopping from product categories mm. so you know you you want pharmacy goods you go to apotea or you want baby gear you go to jolly room or babyland or you know those individual web shops instead. Mm. So it'll be interesting to see if Amazon managed to change uh, behavior of the Swedish consumers. Yeah, I don't think was... it's going to go rapidly. You it's don't think so? No, I think no. it'll take some time. And also they Why? won't. Well, I mean, it's it still always takes some time to change the behavior of people. And I think mm. like certain product categories will move faster. Say, for example, electronics. Yeah, where yeah it's all, of course. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Amazon is big there and books, for example. I'll all say. But, but it also it really, like means that Amazon will need to get the local players on board as well. Mm. And uh, I think they're struggling a tad bit with that in Sweden uh, because um, Swedish brands are a bit, at least from my experience and the way that I, when I listen in on the conversation, is that Swedish brands are a bit skeptical. Oh, okay. a lot of, so in, in what way are they skeptical? I mean, a lot of them already have fairly advanced web shops and, you know, they have an e-commerce presence already. So for them, it may be well, like, will Amazon come in and dominate? Like what happens if I actually start offering my products on Amazon as well? So a lot of people don't see it as an extra sales channel. They look upon it as a threat. And of course, oh, like, yeah. you know, the general discussion on uh, Amazon in Sweden is often focused on the threat that is mm. Amazon. Whilst I'm more focused, I'm just like, yeah, well, Amazon.se, sure, but it's an easy way to go internationally. So, you know, yeah. if you know Amazon on one platform or in one country, you can pretty much do Amazon in any country where Amazon is active. Mm. So, so you don't see it as a threat necessarily? No, I think, see, like, of course, certain retailers uh, will need to look upon it as a threat. But I think, like, for... Uh, most people who are in the e-commerce business, it's an actually an easy opportunity to go abroad. So you don't think that Amazon in Sweden will sort of revolutionize the way that Swedish people shop? I think the only revolution that they may bring it long term is the whole uh, everything store, like the whole marketplace experience. Because we don't really do marketplace. I mean, we have CD on, of course, and we have Findic, but it's not like it's not like the general public is used to go shopping on marketplaces. Mm. So, and also, I mean, of course, Amazon tends to win in the long run, and they're not scared of losing money. No, when they do <laughs> well, that's actually <laughs> enter been sort of their business model, like in the beginning, that they exactly. yeah they basically lost a lot of money, like in in the beginning, or quite a lot of years actually. They they did so exactly. 
I mean, like, say in Australia, they've been uh, live in Australia for three years now, and they're still losing money. They're still losing money but, in Australia. Yeah, but gaining gaining traffic and gaining sales, and also like if you compare to Australia, which is also a pretty you know pretty vast country, like logistics not too easy in Australia, mm. and so, I mean Sweden is a fairly long country which is also like logistics is a bit tricky oh yeah so in Austra- in australia they pretty much spent the entire first year with sorting out you know the fulfillment and logistics side of things and getting prime sorted and then year two traffic and sales started increasing so i think we're going to see something similar in sweden like first initial focus on amazon just to make sure everything works mm-hmm. uh, from a logistics point of view and get prime in order and all of that and then you know a year later, or we'll start seeing them trying to drive a lot more traffic. So do you think that Amazon in Sweden will become a friend or an enemy? Or if you can see it like that? I think it depends on uh, what uh, categories you're selling in <laughs> right now. And also, I mean, for brands, like, you know, if you have your own brand, uh, it should be seen as just another sales channel that will open up, you know, an easy way to reach more customers, mm. both nationally and internationally. However, if you're a retailer mainly focusing on selling other people's brands and you don't have, say, for example, a physical presence today, mm-hmm. then you may struggle in certain product categories. So if you want to succeed on Amazon, then what should you do then? I always recommend people to work from a customer perspective so well that's go always in, a good idea yeah it yeah. is but uh, <laughs> very few people do it i know it yeah. sounds like yeah of course we'll do that and then people don't so you would be surprised with how many people who have never ordered a single product from their own web shop yeah, they, yeah, actually, yeah, exa- yeah and that's like the easiest thing to test the entire process yeah, actually yeah a lot of people don't do that so i would say like go on amazon and start looking there like search for your product see you know what's the competition like what's the what are the prices like can i do something extra here for my customers or you know will my product just bring nothing new to the market Mm -hmm. and if that's the case then maybe i should look at you know how can i redevelop this product in some way so that it'll actually work on amazon but how does so, it, how would you say that it work on Amazon? If we take some concrete uh, example, for instance. I mean, say for example, um, bundles are often successful on Amazon because it's kind of easy to see. Amazon even gives you ideas. Like if you're on a product detail page and then you, Amazon will even tell you like frequently bought together. So this product is often bought together with this and this product. And then, you know, someone might think, hmm, maybe if I can get these three products together in a package. That might be interesting for the consumer. So always try and see how you can add value. And sometimes it's as simple as, you know, bringing new colors or, you know, making a 12 pack instead of a 10 pack if everyone else is selling 10 packs or, you know, stuff like that. So it doesn't necessarily need to be super advanced. Mm. It just needs to be something that's uh, giving the customer a reason to click on your main image and your product instead of someone else's. Well, that makes sense if you when you say it like that. But like, but then what are like the common mistakes then? If we had how to succeed, then what are the common mistakes? Well, one uh, common mistake is that you don't do your research beforehand, and you pretty much just launch your entire product catalog, and then you think you'll see what sells. Yeah. Because you actually you do need to do a lot of work. Like you know, it's SEO, but Amazon. SEO so you can't really use whatever you're using now for your web shop you really need to do the work on the keywords for example and then the images and all of that so it takes a lot of effort to actually get your products Amazon retail ready hmm. well that makes sense mm. but then and also oh sorry no 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 it's okay but uh, no I <laughs> wanted to ask like but how how do they how do they use it like in a really like in a really positive way in so brands yeah I would say like uh, people, the ones that are going internationally, of course, like Amazon is an easy way. I keep on coming back to that, but it is the fact that, you know, you have this big brand with you when you sell on Amazon and also you can test it out easily, like put one product up in, I don't know, um, Japan or India or wherever and see, does this product work for this audience? Because on Amazon, as we talked about earlier, it's so product focused. Mm. So you can pretty much get away with it launching only one product, which is a very cheap way 
to test you know your things out internationally and instead of having to build like a localized web shop set up the logistics yourself it's fairly easy to just use amazon for that mm. Of course, you know, like you need to keep an eye on the legal stuff and Amazon wants to do that for you and in Europe, VAT registrations, etc. But it's still, I'd say, a cheap and easy way to test your wings abroad. Mm, so what is your experience? Because you mentioned the whole legal part. Like, what is your experience with that? Uh, well, you know, you still need people who understand. I mean, I'm... Uh, Uh, I'm a lawyer, <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> which I don't tend to tell people because I've never worked as it, but I do have a law degree. Um, so I have a, yeah, you know, I'm a trained in seeing the and red flags. And you have flags. a great advantage well, then. <laughs> I wouldn't say so. I still use people to help me out with those things uh, that actually yeah, okay. know what they're doing, but it's easy to see the red flags. But I mean, like, you know, you need to keep track of uh, what kind of information is needed for your products and compliance and labels and stuff like that. And I actually, one of my favorite things to do there is to order a competitor's product who is, you know, like a well-known, well-established brand and have a look at their packaging mm -hmm. and whatever comes with the product and be like, okay, so most likely I will also need this type of a label and I'll also need this and this. So that's an easy way to at least get, you know, ideas of what is needed when you're looking at a new country. Because most of the time, you know, they have a really big law department, which yeah. small players don't tend to have. So it's no, a good way not, to get not necessary. ideas. <laughs> no, exactly. So it's a good way to get, you know, ideas on, okay, I should keep an eye out for this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, but Anna, I thought, like, if you don't have anything more to add, do you have any, like, No, not really. I mean, if we go back to the legal thing, just make sure you know what you're doing and take some help. Because even if you're selling you know using amazon as a marketplace it's still your responsibility to make sure that everything you do is mm. legal and okay in that market so that responsibility doesn't go away just because you're selling on a marketplace and not in your own mm. web shop but i also wonder like I, i mean you have a huge experience when it comes to amazon do you have any like golden points or anything that we need to share with people I would say, besides the whole act as a customer, um, make sure you keep track of your margins. Because prices tend to fluctuate on Amazon and it often ends up being more expensive than you initially thought. So yeah. just make sure you actually focus on that part so that you don't launch products that would actually never make you any money on Amazon. Yeah, well, that makes sense. But yeah, but uh, then no. if we... Yeah, sorry. Yeah, the, the and the, the last part is also going back to the whole customer experience thing. Don't think that you won't have to to look after your customers. You will need to do that. And mm. if you go, say, for example, if you're a non-Swedish brand entering Sweden, you will need to have a Swedish-speaking customer service personnel who can proactively work with your Amazon customers oh, and their okay. experience. So, so it's not enough with a person who speaks like English or another language, for instance? No, I would say, no. I mean, of course, you can have a freelancer helping you out and stuff like that, but you do need someone who actually speaks the language and preferably is from that country so they understand the customer on a deeper level. Yeah, well, okay, well, that also makes sense but, uh, because I always, I also think that it's, I guess it has something to do with the whole, um, how do you say it, uh, the whole trustworth Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, right, right. for sure. I mean, it, and also, I mean, reviews on Amazon are so Im massively important. So you don't mm. want to, to risk Google Translate missing something up with the customers. Mm. So just make sure you focus on giving them a great experience. But then um, I'll just wish you the best and have a nice day. Thank you. You too, Marie. And I look forward to seeing the end result. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> so have a nice day, you. You too. Bye. Bye. -bye.